Hello all, welcome back to another video. For today's video, I will be sharing about initial access. It will be a very light video with no hands-on technical demonstration. Before we begin, I would like to give a special shout out to the donations I have received. This one is from my buy me a coffee donation link. Thank you VAY3T for the donation. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And another one is from YouTube Super Thanks. Thanks JOIR2000 for the donation. It is my first Super Thanks here on YouTube. Thanks a lot. Alright now, let's begin. When we talk about initial access, the idea is basically to try to get into your target's environment, obtaining a foothold inside. As shown in the MITRE ATT&CK webpage over here, Initial Access is the third TTP right after Recon and Resource Development. There are several techniques listed in Initial Access but I would like to go over some of the more common ones and provide a summary. When it comes to Initial Access, the most common technique would definitely be exploiting your target's public-facing infrastructure, such as a vulnerable server or application. This could be a manual exploitation. Perhaps you have found an unrestricted file upload and you could exploit it by uploading a web shell, gaining code execution on the server. Or it could be a web server running an outdated version and there is a public exploit for it that you can use and gain a shell on it. The next one would be phishing or spear phishing. Usually, the goal and the objective of phishing would be to obtain some kind of credentials that you can use or you can even directly get a foothold via a payload if your target falls for the phishing attack and executes your payload. There are other less common techniques too, such as getting near to your target's physical location and try to exploit its Wi-Fi infrastructure with something like EAP Hammer or Evil Twin Attack. You can also drop USB devices with a payload in it near your target's physical location, hoping someone would pick it up and plug it into their computer. You can even physically sneak into your target's physical location and directly plug your computer into their network, gaining access directly. And there are possibly many more methods that you can use to gain an initial foothold into your target's environment. If we were to look at how we can exploit a target's public-facing infrastructure, it basically comes down to external attack surface mapping and management. You will need to have a good understanding of your target's exposed attack surface on the internet. There are many companies and solutions that are doing this as a service. They do this to ensure that their external attack surface is constantly being looked at all the time instead of conducting an annual penetration testing on all of their internet exposed infrastructure once per year. There are many different techniques and tools to do this, both passive and active. One good example would be the AMES tool by OWAPS. You can check out the GitHub page of AMES. It documents how the tool does it and you can definitely learn a few tricks by going through and reading the GitHub page. When you look at a target's external attack surface, you should only be interested in severe vulnerabilities like RCE, something that will give you code execution. All in all, the more you can find about a target, the better chance you have. Not forgetting about password spring, if you are able to find an application that is using domain authentication, you can possibly perform password spring and obtain a set of valid domain credentials. Of course, having a set of valid credentials does not necessarily give you initial access. You might get access to someone's email on Outlook, but if there is no remote access products like VPN available, then you probably wouldn't gain initial access despite having credentials. If you are able to gain an initial foothold via exploiting your target's public-facing asset, congratulations. It is usually much safer since code execution over a vulnerable server or application is less likely to be detected compared to sending a payload via email. Next, phishing. In order to conduct phishing, you will need a list of targets. You will need to harvest and enumerate a list of valid email addresses or a list of targets contact details and this is usually from platforms such as linkedin phishing could be sending a message that contains a payload which will grant you initial access if it is executed or it could be a message that contains a phishing url such as your target's vpn portal fronted by a phishing reverse proxy like evil ginx2 or modlishka in order to steal your target's session token. 
Of course, other channels exist too. You can send your phishing attack via email, message or even calling your target. Phishing to get an initial foothold by sending a payload is more likely to be detected by endpoint solution products such as AV and EDR. It requires your payload to be undetected and your victim to actually click on it for it to work. Do you know that this is actually quite a common interview question? For example, how would you hack into example.com? This is what I would do. First, perform external attack surface mapping with the goal of identifying all assets belonging to example.com, such as domains, subdomains, IP addresses, and its associated servers, web applications, API endpoints, and whatever they are exposed on the internet. Then I will attempt to fingerprint the software used and its version, and document all of it in an Excel spreadsheet. I will then assess if any of the assets are vulnerable to exploitation, either from a publicly known CVE or manual exploitation. If this doesn't work, then I will move on to phishing. I will perform information gathering, such as getting all of example.com company details, employees information, job postings, and even look at how their document branding looks like. I will also start registering similar looking domains such as example-helpdesk.com, example-hr.com. Then I will begin social engineering attacks targeting employees of example.com. This might be spear phishing via email or contacting them on LinkedIn messages to build a relationship first such as pretending to be a recruiter. If all of this doesn't work, I will then explore the less common techniques that we have discussed such as looking at their Wi-Fi infrastructure for loopholes, dropping malicious USB devices around their offices, looking at their physical security, assessing if it is possible to just plug our attacking machine directly into their network. Alright, this is it to do this video. A light video to talk about initial access. All of the references shown will be provided in the video's description so be sure to check it out. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel as it will help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye.